Um, I just sort of start with a little bit about me and then kind of give you some of the background to the project and then talk through some of the sort of process of bringing the, the zine or what I call a zine but is kind of more of maybe a photo book now which is kind of potentially why I'm in this slot um, and talk a little bit through through that um, and then yeah any questions that you have kind of as we're going well maybe some questions as we're going along if you'd like to ask them that's fine um, so uh, yeah I'm from Bristol originally and um, I kind of a, a I'm not sort of a trained photographer, if you like. I came to photography through sort of a hobby uh, and then decided that's what I wanted to do. And I, I, got a, I was lucky to get a job as an assistant locally in Bristol um, and thought, right, I'm going to go to college. And I did an HND and then had a kind of few years just wandering about, kind of not really getting anywhere. And I ended up studying at Newport, um, which is where I sort of found my, uh, my inspiration, I guess. I was just kind of like found lots of really exciting practitioners work that really resonated with me and I kind of thought yeah this is what I want this is what I want to be part of and communicate with so fast forward through Newport and graduating and all of that stuff and I'm working in London and I've kind of not really done a lot since graduating and I'm I'm in this difficult place where I'm trying to figure out how do I make work outside of university what the hell am I doing and <laughs> So I was kind of wandering around. I'd, I'd made this book uh, when I was studying. And to be honest with you, I felt quite kind of exhausted by the whole process. And I just wanted to get back into taking photographs and just enjoying wandering around and exploring and using the camera in that way. So this piece of work, which is called uh, Games, uh, it very much relates to how I got to here. So. Um, this was the first project that I did after graduating and I was using a 5 4 camera and taking, wandering about and exploring the kind of the periphery site of the Olympics development in, uh, in London and I was just wandering around in my lunch hour and stuff and taking these double exposures and really trying to get away from this kind of like strict narrative that I'd kind of sort of fallen into I guess through my education possibly. Um, so I was taking these, these pictures over a series of about three or four years and I was playing around with this idea of time and how things change and what kind of stories you can tell with a single image. And uh, yeah, I was just kind of really fascinated by the whole process and surprised as well. And I was kind of getting that real buzz that I first got from photography when I was in the darkroom. This image kind of just springing out and the stories that it was suggesting and the kind of ideas are starting to link up. And so I made this body work. It was 16 big images, massive, size of this work on the back, back wall there. Um, and that was kind of it for a little while. Uh, there wasn't sort of, you know, I, I kind of felt like the converse, I'd made it, there was the work, it was done, it was massive. What am I going to do with it now? I don't know. Um, and so what, when I'd made this work, or let me flick through, I'd, car I'd, I'd been wandering around this little area called Carpenter's Road, which is a sort of 1950s council estate in London, very close to Stratford tube station. And I, as I have seen this kind of massive development of the Olympic site going up and all this money, and these massive kind of empty, shiny tower blocks next to these kind of three dilapidated towers, which were, had people living in them, but a lot of the windows were boarded up. And there was still sort of, it was a mix, mixed development. So it had a nursery, a primary school, comprehensive, right next to Stratford Tube. And it's just empty. And there were, you know, little pockets of people's houses with beautiful gardens still. And then these just empty, derelict places. Something in, I was just like, well, what's, what's going on? Why is this empty? My friends are paying £700 a month for a room that's five minutes walk away. And yet you've got a building here that's empty and a tower block that's empty. What, I, I just didn't really get it. And I sort of, I, I got in contact with some local community groups and, and I didn't really get anywhere to be honest with you. I, I kind of found a lot of my questions weren't answered. And, and so it kind of, the project just sort of fell away from me for a bit. And then it was through social media. A friend sent me a link and said, oh, you might find this quite interesting. Probably like a couple of years later. And it was this group uh, called Focus E15, which were a group of young mums who were in a hostel in Stratford who had been evicted from the, um, their 
uh, from their housing because the housing was being sold on to developers. And this then started a whole another dialogue. Um, what these women had done was they'd kind of become politicised through their eviction, if you like. They'd looked at the housing in the Carpenters' estate and said, hang on a minute, why is this empty? And they'd gone to some of the buildings that I had photographed and um, had uh, squatted it and opened it up as a community centre. So they were there, they were there, kind of, they had it all open to the community, come on in. There were art classes, there were readings, there were talks, there was a lot of kind of like community, um, come on, let's get together. It was very kind of, um, you know, they weren't trashing the place or anything. It was very much kind of bringing attention to the fact that this housing is just lying there empty. What, what's going on? Um, and so, yeah, I'd, this then brought a whole other level to the work for me. Um, maybe I'll come back to these bits in a minute. I started looking at things like the language that developers were using. So I was using my camera at this point not to take beautiful pictures, just as a kind of, you know, documenting, researching tool. Um, and this is just next to the Carpenters' Estate, a fantastic new community for East London. And I'm just thinking, well, hang on a minute, who's... What is this language? Whose community? Who is this community that you're talking about? This new one? What's, who are these other people? You know, who are you replacing? Kind of thing. So I became quite interested in the graphic images and the kind of lifestyle of the people they wanted to bring into the community and how that compared with the people who were already there. Um, this is one of the campaigners. Uh, Jasmine, um, one of the mums who was evicted from um, the, uh, the hostel. And again, I sort of, I'm not, it wasn't massively involved with the group, but I went down to their school where they would kind of meet every um, Saturday and just took some very quick portraits with the digital cameras. It was really different to my normal film led process, the five by four process. Really quick, just having a chat, f popping off a few frames kind of thing. Um, and just kind of thinking through, what, what can I do with these images? You know, how does this, what's the story that I'm trying to tell here? How does it, you know, how can I come in as a photographer and do this justice, you know? So, linking back to the games work where I've been playing around with the, the two images on top of each other, and this desire that I had as a photographer, as w wanting to get involved with the image again, not just looking at it on a screen. Get, get back into it, but I didn't have the patience to go in the dark room anymore. So I started, kind of came up uh, with this process, and I'll, I'll just hand some prints around, actually, so, so you get an idea. Um, I was playing around with this kind of idea of invisibility, making things visible, um, and how it could work with different, different, uh, and I wanted to look at that interplay and so yeah sort of came up with this idea of using this in like an invisible ink if you like so it's a it's a screen print over that hasn't got any pigment in it overlaid on top of the photograph so it's a digital photograph and just started to sort of play around with this and, and the conversation was just evolving the whole time um, I took from I was asked to take part in a community takeover of a gallery space in London called Peer Gallery. And through that, I met a lot of other housing activists and residents who were basically, it's, it's kind of the same story all over London anyway at the moment, in that a lot of um, estates or what you might call schemes up here have been sort of starved of investment and repair. And so what you've got is a lot of... Uh, housing in need of repair, yet the economics of the situation dictate that the council haven't got enough money to uh, invest and redevelop it. So a lot of communities are facing regeneration, um, which often means complete demolition of their housing area. So you're not necessarily dealing with just council tenants, these are homeowners, they're working people, um, but that 
economic situation is such that the land that their housing now occupies is so valuable that this, um, it makes more sense for the council to sell the money off to the developer, the brownfield site, to be regenerated, rebuilt, and uh, a new community sort of uh, brought to life, as it were. So um, this is one area um, which features in... Uh, well, I'm not sure it does feature in the zine, actually. But anyway, this is one area, Sweets Way Housing Estate. Um, this was completely uh, knocked down. The, also, on the Sweets Way uh, Estate, which isn't there anymore, managed to get inside some of the housing, and this is a view from inside looking out. And this, it became quite important within the zine that I wanted this to feature, and I've become a little bit obsessed with dots ever since. Um, so this idea of looking out through through the dots and it's kind of I don't know if I intended this but the way that the screen process works is that it is a series of dots and what I do is I reduce the photograph to a half tone again dots <laughs> which is then overlaying so I can't I can't say that I consciously intended it but this this pattern seems to be recurring throughout and I've, I've got a couple of zines here as well if you if you'd like to have a, a look through those um, and so by using the zine process, or sorry, by using the zine format, I wanted to experiment again with the screen printing process and getting that into the zine. So I've incorporated sort of portraits in that and text. Um, so this is the zine. And text within the zine. So Texts are kind of traced off of banners, protest meeting banners, um, quotes that I've taken from interviews that I've done with residents. Um, just sort of, I want it to be kind of playful, really, because, you know, it's not, I don't live there, and I'm a, I'm a person coming in and looking at a situation, and I'm kind of aware of that position and that privilege in a way. And I didn't want to be too overbearing and I didn't want to claim to be speaking in, uh, with sort of a single authority, authoritative voice. I wanted, to, I wanted to get across that sense of multiple narratives, lots of things happening at the same time. It's not just one thing, but this, this is happening, and it's happening to these people right now. Um, yeah, and I kind of wanted to echo that, really. Um, what else can I tell you about it? Uh, the zine. I guess I was attracted to the zine format because it felt personal and it, it felt right because it could be distributed. And the idea was that it was going to be done cheaply, but it didn't work out that way. <laughs> <laughs> Especially once I started screen printing. Then it just, uh, yeah. And um, so then it turned into a limited edition, which <laughs> is great. Um, but I was able to... Um, to make sure that the zine got out to a lot of people involved in the protest and they were then able to give those zines out. Not necessarily the screen printed versions that you can see now, but um, I like that idea with the zine that it's the personal, it's the it can be the personal, political, it's cheap, it's reproducible, it's out there, you've got time to look at it. Um, yeah, what else would I like to say about that? Oh, well, of course, and I kind of, the zine came together in Glasgow, even though the work was shot outside of it, so it was kind of, Coming to Glasgow in 2014, I uh, you know, met some brilliant people kind of through street level and different things. I've, it was printed up at the... Well, the zine wasn't printed locally. That was done by XYZ, who Sarah recommended to me, actually. Um, and they were really good to work with. But all the screen printing was done up at the um, uh, print studio upstairs. Um, and, yeah, Glasgow's just been brilliant to me like that, like helping me sort of develop my skills and, uh, yeah, just receive lots of kind of support in that way. Um, I think I'm sort of nearing the end now, but um, i trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to say necessarily. Oh, this is just a little bit of the screen printing process, if you were interested. These are little half-tone transparencies of the photographs. There's me lining it up on the screen bed. And then the, the sort of the image goes down, and that's the ink. So this actually, <laughs> it's, like, uh, it's a little bit hit and miss. So you know, I have to. I've done quite a few in order to get a limited edition of fifty. But um, yeah, it's the 
Uh, I'm, I'm pleased with the overall effect, and I continue kind of experimenting with that in lots of different formats, really. So um, I'll be producing some, some work that's going to be on show in the Glasgow Women's Library in March. And, yeah, I just hope to really sort of continue the conversation. It's, yeah, it's an ongoing process. <laughs> Thank you very much. Cheers.